Professor Grant Schofield here and I want to talk about COVID and vaccines today and health. This is not a pro-vax, this is not anti-vax, just to be up front. Uh, my own decision was that I did the double Pfizer jab. I've done that second dose a couple of weeks ago. But I think what you've seen in the last week in science, things keep changing and we keep learning new things. And of course that was always gonna happen because some of these things need the passage of time to play out to figure out what's going on. Who's this video for today? If you're concerned about your own health or health of loved ones, especially people at high risk of bad outcomes from COVID, uh, if you're involved in the vaccine debate and it's become polarized, then I think we can actually find here an actual scientific middle ground of what we do and don't know at this stage. So here's what we do and don't know. First off the rank last week was a bit of investigative journalism from the BMJ, the British Medical Journal, one of the world's premier medical journals. And it's just really identified some problems in the Pfizer trial. I actually don't think, I mean, it's bad that there's there's accusations of falsifying data and not following adverse events and those sorts of things. FDA were, were told about this from the Texas arm of the trial, did nothing. It's been collaborated by other people since then. But actually, I think probably the results of the Pfizer trial probably still stand, mainly because when you look at population studies, this is a randomized trial, but if you look at, at, at case control studies or what's happening as the vaccine was rolled out over the three month period that this trial went, then you see a similar thing that that at least this vaccine was pretty effective in reducing uh, symptomatic infection, hospitalization, and I guess most importantly, uh, an endpoint you're not coming back from, which is death. So it really does reduce that. And so over that time frame, it seems worthwhile taking it. Now, notwithstanding, it's not powered. The trials of this size didn't have enough subjects to detect the rare event of a death. Um, or possibly even the rare events of side effects that, that couldn't statistically pick those. But anyway, it's an interesting thing. Uh, so you want to talk about conspiracies. Well, Pfizer and along with the other real top 10 pharmaceutical companies in the world have all been convicted of conspiracy over the last uh, several years, billions of dollars of fines. And so, you know, not, this isn't a conspiracy therapy, this is actual conspiracy. Uh, that aside, I think the, uh, as I said, I th my view is that the results probably still stand over the time period that's happened. But uh, here's a couple of big news things that came out last week. So this is a preprint for the Lancet, arguably the world's most eminent medical journal. It's still to undergo full peer review, but I think the results are pretty substantive and they're not going to change upon peer review. Uh, what did this study do? It, it took Swedes, uh, about 1.8 million of them, half had been double vaccinated with a, a variety of different vaccines, Pfizer, Moderna, and so on. They followed them up over nine months the, uh, with some people who were never vaccinated in the first place. And this is a, it's not a randomized trial, but it's a very big prospective population study. It's of a sort called a case control study because it's following that cohort through and that match. So pretty interesting. Well, what did they find? Well, the first thing is this, is this idea of waning. So the longer the trial goes on, the less protection you have from, in this case, symptomatic COVID. So I think that that first period, what is that? Oh, 120 odd days, four months. There's quite good protection and then it starts to wane off uh, rapidly. This point here where that confidence interval crosses zero is the point where there's no longer any difference in protection against symptomatic COVID from people who were never vaccinated in the first place. So I think you can see that's a pretty big deal, isn't it? That we're getting this drop in, uh, this waning of the effectiveness. Uh, and effective, uh, so what's that? Just uh, under 200 days uh, before you're back to, put, to really having no protection from symptomatic COVID. Okay, well you get symptomatic COVID, big deal. Well they also follow to uh, hospitalization or death. These are the combined data for here. Uh, strong effect to start with and then wanes off. Arguably, it's pretty strong for that first four or five months. Uh, here's the point where it, there's no longer any statistical confidence that it crosses zero. So uh, 
Interestingly that the protection wasn't down to zero for all groups, uh, but interestingly that the protection against hospitalization or death for those vaccinated waned off uh, and was lost and down to zero at this 220 day point for older men and people with an existing chronic condition, which is exactly the ones we're trying to protect. Why? Don't know. There's some speculation about uh, B cell and T cell uh, memory things wane more quickly in that group, but uh, an interesting thing. So that's that's one study that came out. Also coming out with Pfizer's own trial of the booster program, 10,000 participants, uh, medium follow-up of 2.5 months. During the study period, there were five cases of COVID-19 in the booster group and 109 cases in the non-booster group. So everyone in this trial, the 10,000 participants, had been double dosed with Pfizer. Uh, then they were followed up with a booster and they followed them for two and a half months after that booster. And you can see it's really powered with a sample of that size just to detect symptomatic COVID and, you know, big decrease, right? That's cool. Similar to what we saw in the, in the initial trial. How long does it last for? Well, at least two and a half months, I guess. Does it wane after that? We don't know that yet. And so with the adverse events, we don't know that yet, but wasn't really powered for that. But uh, again, uh, published in The Lancet uh, is the Israeli study that did look at this sort of thing. And so this is again, another one of these sort of prospective case control type things. Uh, big group matched uh, people who were double jabbed versus people who are double jabbed and got the booster. They followed them for between seven and 55 days post booster. Oh, what have we got there? So there's the first one, 728,328 uh, matched pairs, seven to 55 day follow up. What do we see for that first group? Just watch that top graph at the moment. Bottom one's not really supposed to be there. Hospitalization, double vaxxed. 231 got hospitalized. The booster group showed substantial protection. So remember the double vax, they were vaccinated. The booster had double vax plus the vaccine. So in that period, they uh, protected. Uh, this is now uh, severe disease, 157 versus 17. And the last one there, death, double vax, 44 died, uh, seven versus the booster. So what do we conclude from this so far? Yeah, Pfizer had a few dodgy things in the trial, probably didn't substantively affect the results. You see similar things in big population studies. Notwithstanding adverse events and all that, I don't think that's the topic of this talk. The second thing is, is there's now evidence that beyond the three months of the Pfizer, original Pfizer and other trials, there's significant evidence across all of the vaccines of waning, both in terms of symptomatic COVID and severe disease and, disease and death. Uh, for, especially for the uh, older males um, and those with a chronic disease, i.e. those with most risk. Uh, is there now evidence for a booster? Yeah, there is evidence for a booster efficacy at, at, uh, and it's been studied uh, in a smaller randomised trial by Pfizer with 10,000 people and it, it definitely reduces symptomatic COVID over two and a half months. And now it's been studied in, in a more prospective study like this and up to 55 days is good evidence of protective. Does the booster wane? No one knows. Does the booster have other side effects long term? Well, no one knows. So I think we just need to understand the limits of our science. So we understand we have a, a series of vaccines, or some of them aren't even vaccines, they have MNRA uh, gene therapies, uh, and they do prevent disease and death. And that's an important thing to understand. They do do that, but they wane. Uh, and we do have boosters and they do present, prevent disease and death and that's important. They may wane, I guess you might expect them to, we don't know. So we'll, time will tell. That's where the science is at the moment and we should try and just understand that because only the passage of time and these large population studies will tell us the story and that's a critical thing to understand. You can be pro-vax, anti-vax and all this sort of stuff but the data will tell the story. Uh, so if you've got vulnerable people, I guess, at least in the short term, you would consider a booster, wouldn't you? Uh, are we going to keep boosting entire populations and locking them down and then discriminate against people vaxxed versus non-vaxxed over the long term? Seems pretty unlikely. Uh, if you were vaxxed back in May or something and you're at risk, well, you've 
probably have no longer have any protection. That's the basic medical facts of it as we understand this this week. They could be different next week. We could understand some more things. But at the moment, I think we say that there's a significant waning. So keeping lockdown and waiting for longer means that the most vulnerable who are vaxxed more, a longer time ago have less and less benefit. Also last week, following on from the multiple, multiple studies now that we've seen is the effect that metabolic health, i.e. the presence of a chronic condition, uh, especially losing control of your blood glucose, uh, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, uh, but even just hyperinsulinemia and the predictions that include that. Uh, we understand now that there are some things. If you want to keep your health up to scratch, regardless of which camp you're sitting in, uh, and thinking about waning or not waning and boosters, then we know that fitness is medicine, that people who are physically fitter do better through this. They're more insulin sensitive, their glucose is better. We know that sleep is medicine for the same reason probably we know that food is medicine particularly foods uh, avoiding ultra processed foods sugar and starchy foods foods that can keep your blood sugar under control whole food food line interference is likely to be protective if you can reverse your chronic condition between fitness sleep and food as medicine then you're better off aren't you that's what we should be focusing on that is a tool that we know will work uh, it's a tool that will affect the quality of our life regardless of covid and we should also realise that sunshine is medicine because of that vitamin D component is likely to be highly efficacious in producing, reducing severe COVID, helping sort out COVID if you get it, uh, and protecting you from any viral infection in the first place, as well as everything else that it's good for. So get out there. Um, you might even consider a supplement. We'll probably deal with that uh, in other parts. Uh, so that's my little scientific wrap. I felt that it was pretty important to put that out this week it's been a big week the science continually unravels that's that's science for you we know more this week than we did last week and we'll know more next week than we did this week but that's where I think the totality of the evidence sits for vaccine efficacy make what you like of it um, I'd love to hear your comments please get involved in this debate there's never been a more important one in society's history we know we've got a concurrent epidemic of poor mental health and poor metabolic health that this whole thing is part of and it's wrapped up in there. We need to consider those as well. Come and see us at precure.com. Get involved in that movement uh, around being healthy. Get involved in this debate and, and have your 10 cents worth on the science and please share this if you think it's got any value for you, uh, your friends and family.